quick revision video on Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. We'll start with some essentials. Bronsted Lowry acids are proton or H plus donors. Bronsted Lowry bases are the opposite, so they are proton acceptors. So some examples of different types of acids now. So monobasic acids, they donate one mole of H plus per mole of acid. A couple of examples there, hydrochloric and ethanoic acid. Dibasic acids donate two moles of H plus per mole of acid. So we've got sulfuric acid and ethane dioic acid. And finally, tribasic acids can donate three moles of H plus per mole of acid. So phosphoric acid is the example I've got there. So moving on to conjugate acid base pairs now, they're defined as a pair of two species that can transform into each other by gain or loss of a proton. So we'll use a couple of equations to explain this. So there's the first one, ethanoic acid and hydrochloric acid. Bit strange, both acids, but ethanoic acid's a weak acid and hydrochloric acid's a strong acid. So if we look at this pair of species first, if we think about what's happening, the ethanoic acid is gaining or accepting a proton and becoming this species here. And going the other way, that can donate the proton and go back to that. So it's a conjugate acid base pair where this is the base. So I'm going to call that B1 and there's its conjugate acid. So we'll call that A1. So where's the proton coming from that this is accepting? Well, it's obviously coming from the HCl. So that's donating a proton. And becoming that and going the other way that can accept a proton and become that so they're a pair and obviously the HCl would be an acid so we'll call it A2 now because it's a different pair to the ones and there's B2. Second example we've got sulfuric acid and nitric acid so again I've picked two acids this time we're both strong acids so at the end of the equation we'll be able to say which acids the strongest so we'll pick the first pair have a think about what's happening there. The H2SO4 is losing a proton to become HSO4 minus, and so therefore it's acting as an acid, so we'll call it A1, so that must be B1. So there's the other pair, and obviously the nitric acid must be accepting the proton from the sulfuric acid, so that's B2, and its conjugate acid is that one there. So a couple of things to remember about these, you must have an acid and a base on each side of the equation and you must have a 1 and a 2 on each side of the equation as well. We'll finish with this slide here, the role of H plus ions in the reactions of acids and if you think about it, the H plus ion is the active ingredient in acids so to see it we're going to use ionic equations. So the first one we'll look at is with metals, so magnesium plus HCl is my example. There's the ionic equation. I'm leaving out the aqueous chloride ions because they would appear both sides of the equation, the spectator ions, and so we can, we can ignore them. So you can see clearly that the H plus ion is reacting with the magnesium. With carbonates now, so copper carbonate and nitric acid, Again, I'm leaving out the nitrate ion this time because it's a spectator ion. And again, you can see the H plus ions are reacting with the copper carbonate. Moving on to metal oxides now, so sodium oxide and sulfuric acid. There's the ion equation. I'm leaving out the sulfate ions this time. And finally, with metal hydroxides, potassium hydroxide and HCl, well, all of these reactions, metal hydroxides and acids, can be simplified to this one here. So this time the positive metal ions and the negative ions from the acid are being left out. What type of reactions are these? Well, the first one is a redox reaction. The magnesium has been oxidized from zero oxidation state to plus two, and the hydrogen is reduced from plus one to zero. All of the others involve essentially the reaction of an acid with a base to make water and so they're all neutralization reactions.